né? Socrates Fortlow. His mother named him Socrates because it was a wise man's name. She couldn't teach him how to write, but she could give him the name of someone smart. He was a violent man. He'd come up hard and gave as good as he got. The rage he carried brought him to prison, but the Indiana Correctional Authority wasn't able to stem his anger. Socrates was a solitary man. He kept his own company with nothing but hurt in his pockets and half-forgotten memories for family and friends. make a living, to have a little dignity in our lives. Socrates roamed the streets with his cart because at least he could say he was his own man. When they let him out of prison, he ran as though he'd escaped. They paid him $733 for 18 years hard labor. He put the money in his pocket and took the bus to Los Angeles. That was 10 months ago. He'd heard L.A. was a big, rambling bunch of towns where everybody's in too much of a hurry to remember your face. An ex-con would need that kind of anonymity. I first met Socrates when I was walking past a construction site on Crenshaw. He was looking for work, but the foreman said that he was too old, that work in construction was a young man's game. It took three men to throw Socrates out of there. I could see right then that he'd lived so close to the edge for so long that you knew he was bound to get cut. Good morning, Socko. Hey, if it don't rain. Oh. How you doing, right? Ah, uh, just that flu I had last month got me aching some. Flu? Ah, uh, you want to play some dominoes after? No, man, I got to get over to West L.A. What you doing way over there? I'm looking for a job. <laughs> Where? Bounty Supermarket. You think they're going to hire you? Uh, they got to, man. I can't be walking these streets scooping up garbage for the rest of my life, can I? <laughs> Hey, man, I know karate. Whoop your ass, boy. Hey. Yo, what's up? Marlon, leave the man alone. 
Step the fuck back, old man. Let you want some of this. Shit, man. See what you did to my hand, boy? You see what you did to my hand, fool? Hey! What's going on? Hmm? Ain't nothing, man. No, no Miss Keen. I shoot. There, there ain't no problem going on here, all right? Hey, hey Sako. Hey, brother. You, you need anything, man? Hey, come on, Sako. We don't do business with troublemakers. You the troublemaker. Come on, come on, come on, Miss Keen. Now, now, it's not. He not. Come on, now. We ain't got nothing to stop. See, 33, 34, 35, 36, 36, 75. All right, Sako. Coco, why are you paying me a change like I'm a goddamn kid? Well, see, that's because we got too much change to throw from the crushing machines, and so, you know, we just passing it out right here. If you don't want the money, why don't you just give it back and drag your cans back out in the street? Marlon, man. Marlon make me mad. Oh, uh, Marlon. Marlon pissed me off. Hell, he won't even take up for himself. Well, everybody can't stand up for himself like you can, Bert. I mean, I don't mind if a man's scared. If you're scared, you're scared. What I mind is when you're just plain stupid. Neither one of them fools heard the word I said. Bert, you what? What I said to the white man. What you said? Oh, nigga, please. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Saco? Socrates had applied for work in almost every supermarket in South Central. He went farther and farther west just to find somebody who didn't know him as a bottles and can man. Because if you worked hard in the street finding and toting cans, they looked at you like you were a bum. an application. An application for what? A job. Oh, uh, how old are you, sir? That's against the law. Huh? Asking my age. You can't discriminate against color or sex or religion or infirmity or against age. That's the law. I know that I'm not discriminating. There's uh, just no jobs. Why, uh, why don't you come back in the fall when the kids are all in school? Hey, hold on. came for an application. I told you, it we don't, don't matter. You got to give me an application regardless. That's the law, too. Wait here. Just send it in. Look, man, I didn't come down here for no piece of paper. I came down here to apply for a job. Thank you. Hello, sir. I'm Miss Grimes. Can I help you? I want to ask a few questions about my application. We're very busy. What is it that you don't understand? Well, it asks here whether or not I have a car. Now, why is it? Where's this street address? Down in Watts. Well, that's that's just too far to go by bus every day. We have other stores. Look, I can get here. All right. Well, I'll send this off to the main office, and if everything clears, we'll give you a call. Uh, that's a problem right there. Uh, 
I don't have a phone. Oh, well, personnel needs a phone number. That's how they check your residence. They can send it to my address. Look, do me a favor. Send it in for me anyway. Just told you. Uh, send it in. I'll come down myself and find out what they said. You don't understand. Look, send it in for me. All right. All right. It's not going to make any difference. Mr. Fartlow. Damn flies about to eat me up in here. How are you today, Owl? All right. You've been collecting cans. <clears throat> yeah. Got my roots down. Uh, got 17 regular customers. And I almost made $37 a day. And change. Yeah. It's that damn redemption center. The clerks in there want to treat a man like a dog. Now, that's why I got to go out here and find me a real job. This way, I might not have to hurt one of them fools. Well, that's some white folks for you. It ain't all white folks, I huh? Like today, tried to show one black man how he got to respect another. I don't think he heard me, though. Oh, my God. Have you gone to the emergency room for this, Mr. Fortlow? No. Well, you should. This could get infected. You could get locked jaw. Look, I done had plenty of tetanus shots in my day. I, I might get broke jaw, but I damn sure ain't gonna get no locked jaw. So where are you looking for a job? Supermarket. I could put groceries in a bag as, as good as any of these teenagers around here. Box boy? Nah, Mr. Fartlow, you way too good for that. They ain't too good to pay the rent. Well... You can work for me. Yeah, you can be right back here working with me. No, I, I, I can't be working in no small space. No, oh, baby, I, I go crazy like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you want to eat? That big meatloaf plate. I sure could use it. I walked a mile for every dollar I made today. What's that? That's a meatloaf plate. Uh-uh, that ain't half what you normally serve. That's exactly what I serve my everyday customers. Big plates for somebody special. Every night, Socrates gave himself a grade. He'd once made a promise, a dark oath. He swore he'd never hurt another person except to do good. Anytime he wrote down failure, someone has been hurt, but no good has been accomplished. <laughs> Teresa was the woman who loved him before he went bad. But even a long-suffering black woman will let you go after murder and rape. Sorry. Now, she never wrote him in prison, but he kept her picture and told her good night before he went to bed. What you doing over there, boy? I asked you a question. Where you think you're going, huh? What you got in that box? Huh? What's in the box? Put it down. Huh? Huh? Come here. Ah! Let me go, man! Let me go! Pick it up. You heard what I said? Huh? Pick it up. Now let's go. What you killed Dexter for, asshole? 
What? You heard me. You never kill nobody, mister. Somebody must lie to you. Son. Sit your little narrow ass down. It's my friend, Dexter. Crazy, man. That's a chicken. Birds can't be nobody's friend. You get over there, you fuck him. Damn, you killed him. Hold him. Go on, I ain't playing with you, boy. If you don't know how to pluck a chicken, then why the hell you kill it? I don't know. Maybe some old lady like eating chicken and want to bite it. Why you kill this chicken? Because I hated it. That's why I always crown like some sick old man. You live around here? Over on Hooper. Well, you can't hear no rooster from over there. Well, get back over there and pluck all the feathers out. And when you finish, cut him open with that knife on the sink there. And make sure you rinse out all the blood. All of it. What's your name, boy? Daryl. You finna do something with that knife, Daryl? We're gonna make some uh, fresh green beans, some dirty rice, some stewed chicken on the hot plate over here. We gotta cook them one at a time, but we gonna have us a good breakfast. Go on, clean up them feathers over there. You hungry? Hell yeah. Good. That's real good. Boys should be hungry. Fuck that's supposed to mean. It means something's missing and hungry tells you what it is. That's some kind of friend to you? Hungry your friend too? Yeah. Hungry, horny, how come? They all my friends. My best friends. Man got to have good friends to make it through the penitentiary. My daddy's up in the city jail. At least he was. Died though. Tell it. You can't go till then. Tell you what? I'm not afraid of you. Yeah, you are too. You ain't no fool. Now come on, Daryl. Tell it. You can go. Tell you what? You killed somebody. I'm not gonna turn you in. But you didn't know I was talking about a chicken when I told you about Dexter. You thought I was talking about you. You thought I knew something about you. No. I ain't no judge, little brother. But you're gonna have to talk to me. Ain't nobody coming to save you. It wasn't my fault. It was just me, Philip, and them up in the Baldwin Hills. Go. 
hope. Hey, how you doing? Shit. Hey, you kids, come here. I'm gonna kick your butt. Hey, hey, come back. My cousins in there left at me. Can I go with you? Man, go on, man. Get away. Better get out of here, fool. Come on. <laughs> get away. Please. Come on, punk. I don't do you piece of shit. Come on, man, dog. Get off. What? I need a fat ass nigga alone, man. Anybody find him? Philip said he killed anybody who told. I gotta go to the bathroom. Socrates believed every man had his own load to shoulder. He'd never cared about another killer soul. But when he thought about that skinny boy, he realized he'd been wrong. What? You and your friends did wrong, Daryl. Uh, I'm just talking to you one black man to another. Because, right? see, if you don't know when you've done wrong, my well, life ain't worth a damn. So could I go now? You live with your mama? Uh-uh. Foster parents. The guy ain't going to no jail. Well, I don't blame you for that. That don't make no sense. Ain't gonna solve nothing. Better to shoot yourself than go to jail. Your foster mom cook for you? She don't even know where I am half the time. Well, you you could always come back here, and 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 we'll cook together. What they put you in jail for? Killed a man and a woman. White man? Well, bye. So long, little brother. Sorry about your chicken. You wasn't none of mine. He belonged to Miss Walker across the alley. Well, bye. wondered at the boy and at the rooster that had gotten him out of bed every day for the past 10 months. The rooster was hoarse in his old age. Sometimes his crow was no more than a whisper. But at least that motherfucker tried. What you doing around? I mean, I mean, hey. Mr. Fortlow, you seen Howard? He missing? We had a fight. And he walked out? Oh, he's a damn fool. He was just mad. You know where he is? Hey, 
Come on inside, have some coffee with me, all right? Well, I better not. I just need to know if you've seen him. Well, no, honey, I, I ain't seen him, but, I mean, I, I go look for him if you want me to. Thanks. You sure you don't want to come inside and have some coffee with me? <laughs> I got to get home to my kids. All right. If you see him, don't tell him I came over here, okay? Just call me if you find out where he is. You bet. Uh, listen up, guys. Ted's sick. He he can't make it in this morning. So could you guys come back tomorrow? Tomorrow? Man, what are we supposed to do with these here cans until tomorrow? Yeah, we need our money now. Okay, but you'll have to stay outside till Mr. Jonah comes in. When is that? I don't know. Maybe later. When's later? Two, four, six hours from now? I'm sorry. It can't be helped. You're supposed to take these cans. Yeah. From our customers to you people, you're not our customers. You trying to tell me you think we don't eat food from the store? Look, they got us out here waiting like dogs tied to a pole, right? You know, I must have seen the man 50 times. He must have seen my face 50 times. He don't even know my name. You tell him your name? I shook his hand and said it right to his face. Should have broke his goddamn neck. What I should have did. They gonna hire you at Bounty? I'm gonna break his neck when he come out here, yeah. See what that motherfucker think when I break his goddamn bone! Huh? Socrates! Huh? Socko! Come on, man, let's go. Let's get out of here. Find somebody who wanna do business. You wanna go? Yeah, man, this ain't worth it. City. They see you pushing a the cart and want to treat you like trash. I'm tired of it. Too old to be scooping up garbage and shit for the rest of my life. Look, don't come crying to me about this mess. You wouldn't even have to go out there except to buy steaks if you'd work here with me. Hey, Wolf. Hungry like a motherfucker. How many pies you got today? Uh, cherry pie, apple pie, and coconut cream. I'll take all three. You want three slices of pie? No, maybe three whole pies. Well, Wilfred, I'm gonna have to charge you by the slice. So it's gonna be $12 each. Okay. Bring me a whole pot of coffee, too, please. What's up, brother? How you living? Depends on what comes next. Yeah, well, don't you living minute to minute, man. I used to be like that. Thank you, ma'am. What's your name, huh? Socrates. 
That's somebody famous, right? Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. See? I ain't no fool. I know some shit. My name is Wilfred. My niggas call me Willie. So what you eating there, so crazy? <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking with you. Fucking with you, man. Hey, Yaul! Yeah. Hey, bring my man Socrates here some more of this chicken and shit. Put it on my bill. That's nice, huh? I bet she give you some of that for free. Ain't nothing in this life free, brother. What you work at, brother? I'm looking for work. Huh? That's what you think I do? See, now you got scars on your hands from fighting. That bullet hole in the side of your neck. You ain't dealing no drugs, you done damn sure use them. Say. Yeah, you got a fast eye, you got a quick tongue. I say that make you a thief, common thief. I don't like thieves much. See? I'll be out here trying to find a job, people think I'm crazy. But kids look at you and think the working's for fools. Oh, that's damn good, Socrates. Oh, that's damn good. Oh, I see you see some shit. But you can't see me, brother. Mm -mm. You can't even see me. Put on a running suit like this here. Jump on a goddamn bus. And run my ass straight to the Beverly Center Mall. Steal me a car. Hmm? Put a hat or a bandana on my head. Because you know they can't hardly put no nigga out of no lineup with something on his head. See, I learned that in jail. Then I grabbed me some old rich white bitch. Some old Chinese girl. Grabbed her whole body of throat and just cut her just a little bit. Said she too goddamn worried about bleeding before she called a cop. Had some hoe just pissing her panties, man. Just jumped out of my running suit and drove the fuck out of that parking lot like it was nothing. Old cops coming in there looking for some old hood nigga. But me? I be dressed for business, baby. Hmm? so goddamn funny. <laughs> huh? I ain't stealing from no blacks. I ain't stealing from no damn stores down here. Mm-hmm. Motherfucker. You gonna sit your ass over there in them old funky ass clothes and diss me with your stomach full of the food I just paid for? With my funky ass clothes and my nigga appetite too. Yeah, my clothes are second hand. But all the holes in my clothes, I keep some done. No, I ain't got no fan of $20 bills in my hand. And I ain't got no goddamn woman's butt on my hands either. You better! <laughs> oh, you way too deep for me, brother. You just way too deep. Fuck you. Fuck me? Hey, man, you don't even have to like me. But why don't you try paying for your own goddamn food with them pennies jingling in your pocket. I'm gonna do you one better than that, boy. I'm gonna pay for your food. I ain't no fool either, Willie. Everybody got to pay. Ain't nothing in this life free. It's my turn to pay right now. Nigga. Your turn is waiting on you out there somewhere. Wilfred. Wilfred. Get on out of here. Don't you think you're mad enough to make me? Go on, leap, bro. Go on, leap, bro. Get out of here, Wilfred. Leap. Y'all crazy. Get on out of here, boy. All right, play out. All right.
funk is. Why you got to pay for him? Because a man's got to pay his own way, I. Right? Well, why you got to pay for him? He was going to pay for you. No, it's the other way around. I'm paying for men like him all my life. Just like his daddy paid for me. I don't understand this. If you're so upstanding and so moral and so honest, why don't you just work for me? Oh, it's because I'm a woman? Yeah, you a woman, all right. Yeah, you was ready to pull hot grease on Willie if he messed with me. What you doing out here in the storm, boy? Come on, get inside before you get sick. Brown sassafras. Time leaves. That's what makes you gumbo gumbo. Your dreams? Yeah, sometimes. What you dream about? Whatever it is I want and don't have. That's why they call them dreams. You ever dream about something you don't want? I mean, something you really hate? Something make you wake up scared and want to run? Dream about that boy? It was in a dark room. And black everywhere. But I could still see him. He was cut on the stomach and naked, coming after me. And then I ran. He catch you? I always wake up before I could. But if he catch me, I know I'm gonna be dead. Cause I didn't do nothing to help him. Well, your dream telling you that you got to do something to make it right. Then maybe I could sleep? Yeah, I bet you could. You go on, finish your food. And then you going back and get in my bed, see if you can't get some sleep. I'll make sure nobody come get you. Socrates saw that Daryl respected him wanted to know what he thought. But the idea that Daryl wanted to hear what he had to say scared him. Socrates wanted to reach out to the child and tell him that it was okay, that everything was going to be all right. But it wasn't all right. It might never be. Because trouble would crawl up into your mind and come inside with you. children have already died because of no stop sign. Well, it's very simple. There's a, a dangerous intersection. Two children are dead. We need to stop sign. Uh -huh.
Hello? Miss Warren, is that you? Yes. Who is this? Is your husband there, ma'am? I don't have any husband. Who is this? Hello? I, I don't know how to say this, ma'am. Is this about Felix? Are you calling about my son? Up at Oil Derrick, number 22, up in the Baldwin Hills, there's some bushes up behind there. <gasps> there. He's up there in the bushes. <laughs> I wouldn't have called you except I knew that you needed to settle it in your mind. I, I, I would have called the police, but I don't know. They might not get around to looking if, if, if you didn't. Hey. Hey. You all right? <clears throat> I'm sorry I hit you, little brother. I just got mad when I heard that lady screaming and all. You and your friends, you broke that woman's heart for nothing. Sorry. I know you're sorry. I know you get them nightmares. You're gonna get them for a long time, little brother. A real long time. Do I stay here tonight? Yeah. again. Can I help you? I came to see if your head office called back yet. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Look, let me talk to your boss. I said... Don't make me mad, boy. I said I want to talk to your boss. Mr. Portlow, I have told you, you cannot work here if you don't have a phone. And I told you, Miss Grimes, you're going to call down to your head office and get an official word on me. Otherwise, I'm going to be down here in your face every day till I know why I can't have a job. Mr. Fortlow, I am calling the police. I'll be back for my answer in a few days. You seen him? Look, come on in the house, honey. You ain't got to stand out here. There you go. I ain't got the time to be wasting around here, Socrates Fort, though. You called and said you heard something. What is it? Okay, but just for a minute.
You want some coffee? Yeah, you know that husband of yours shouldn't let a beautiful woman like you all by herself for long. Where is he? Um, I don't exactly know, but, um, I think I know where I might be able to find him. I'm scared. So if you really could help me, I wish you would. He ain't called him nothing. I just said maybe he could get a job down with McDonald's or something while he was waiting on the computer job. You know, he ain't had a job in nine months. And they cut my hours back at pennies. Well, what's wrong with him? Don't he want to work? He's, he's just too proud. That's all. He ain't too proud to let his wife go out and work. I mean, what do you think? You think that Winnie and little Howard are going to stop growing until he finds some kind of job he ain't going to be ashamed of? Shit. Man's a fool. If he was mine. I'd be working at McDonald's in the daytime, Burger King at night, Kentucky Fried Chicken at noon. Shit. Y'all got kids. Mm -hmm. How are them Charlotte better watch out? He liable to find some other man up in his bed. No. No, it ain't nothing like that going on. I, I know that. All I'm trying to say is that he got a treasure in you. You need to look after it. Did you lose somebody? Is that why you sound so upset about me and Howard? Uh, you take milk and sugar? Sugar. I will go out here and find Howard. I'm going to tell him he's a fool and that he needs to get his ass home tonight because in a day or two at most, I'm going to be at his front door. And if he ain't home, I'm going to take you and his kids to a show. Find Howard. No, I'll find it. Don't worry. If you don't come home, you will see me tomorrow. Man, why you want to talk to Karina like that, man? Like you want something. What, you want something? Why you want to come on to my wife, man? She ain't your wife. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? 
All right, I got a bottle of whiskey up under the sink. You better get it before you get yourself hurt. Man, why you want to be telling Karina all that shit, man? She's my wife. Man, what the? Hey, get her. Long as you out there, she ain't yours. Man, I thought you was my friend. You ain't got no friends when it comes to a woman like that, Howard. That's what I was trying to tell you before she got here. Fuck you. Howard, that's a woman you got, man. She ain't no dog. You can't just leave her somewhere like you leave a car. Shit, you don't go home, I'll be there. Me or somebody else. That ain't right, man. You over here talking to me about my problems and you gonna go running after my old lady? What you said you ain't want her, ain't that what you said? No, I said I couldn't stand her dogging me like that. That's what I said. I wouldn't mind that kind of dogging. Woman want to kick my ass when I fuck up, kiss my head when I do right, I'll be the first one in line. Sako, you get that job? Not yet. Hello, love you. Don't worry about that, man. You know, once love you get a hard thought in her head, she won't let up on her. Uh, I don't blame her. She can smell the bad on me, and she ain't wrong. Come on, let's go get a couple beers. <clears throat> what you say you want to talk to me about, right? Yeah, this dope fiend live out there near Howard now. Who? Pettis Mulgrew. What about him? Well, you know, Pettis always been bad, stealing, fighting. Now he done discovered crack. Robbed two old ladies to get his fix. Said that they told he'd get out of jail and kill him. He hurt him? No, I just scared him, but hey, somebody got to do something. <clears throat> I mean, it ain't right. Police might get him, and then again, they might not. What you trying to say? We got to stop them. We got to... Dope fiend either stops himself, goes to jail, or dies. I could kill him. Yeah, Mr. Burke, I believe you could. But sometimes you got to let up. It ain't for you to decide. How you doing, Winnie? Mom's a doll. Howard! Howard, Socrates is here. Come on in, Mr. Fortlow. Karina, go and take the kids in the other room, please. Go on. Go on, sit down. What is it, Howard? Last night, about 6 o'clock, Winnie took it in her head to go out looking for me. Mm -hmm. Here I am, laid up over Stoney's place with my little baby girl in some damn alley looking for me. Well, what happened? She seen Pettis Mulgrew kill Leroy Wade. Give me that there it is. Oh. Kill him. Kill him. That's what we ought to do. Ain't that what you said, Socrates? Ain't that right? 
I said we should go over there right now and shoot him in his head. <laughs> we can't do that, man. We ain't even sure he did it. It's just hearsay we going on, right? Oh, uh, my baby girl ain't lying now. She seen Pettis jump on Leroy with that knife. She told Karina that before they even found him. Now, if she seen Leroy get it, she know she seen who give it. She knew it was Leroy. She could be wrong. She knew What's he wrong was with dead. you, right? <sighs> Nothing, just that now fool I had. One man and not the other. go away. It could happen. Well, even if she did see it, then we should still go to the cops. Will Corina let me talk to Winnie later? <sighs> no, she don't want to get her scared, man. Well, then you tell me. You tell me what else did Winnie see. Look, that crazy fool is a block from my house. Now, Karina's scared to death. Damn, sound like a war zone out there. Listen to that. <laughs> Running them down like slaves. You know, they got dogs, too. Look, what you want us to do, Howard? Well, I got to be going soon. You know, man, I mean, five people been mugged around here the last two weeks, man. We all know Pettis did it. Now they're killing people. Well, tell the police. <sighs> Dopey don't stop till they're dead. We got to kill him. Well, we got to do something, but we can't kill him. Why not? Because, Burke, you just can't wash murder off your hands, man. You got to live with that shit. You can't go to the cops because you should never turn a black man over to the police. It'd be better to kill him. Amen. We can't do nothing. You gonna help us, Sako? I tell you what, right? I do what I can. You go see a doctor about that gut. Let me do the talk. Who is it? It's me, Pettis. Sacco. What you want, man? I got money on my mind, Pettis. Money and how we can make some. Just talking to him. We are talking. The only way to get this boy's attention. Let me go. Girl, you better go put some clothes on. You from my daddy? Yeah. Yeah, now get your clothes and get on out of here. What you gonna do to Pettis? Go on, get out of here. Go on. Look, all right, all right, she gone, ain't she? We know what you've been doing, Pettis. Look, I ain't done a damn thing. I don't know what the fuck. Oh! Get him back up in the chair. Uh -oh. Oh. Hey, man, look, let me tell you something, man. Don't you talk. You come up in my house all like y'all uh -uh. crazy Shut up. and all no. this. Y'all need to just talk. get the fuck out of my house right now. Shut up. Don't nobody want to hear what you got to say. All you got to do is listen. What? Now, we done had a trial. One man wanted to kill you. Somebody else wanted to turn you over to the police. We talked about it. We done come to a decision. Yeah, what? You got to leave, boy. I ain't done nothing. So no, what the hell is you talking no, about? No, How are you going to no. come up in my hey, house? You like, got, I to, got leave to leave the so whole and neighborhood. I ain't done now, you don't go, you dead. I don't know what the hell you what the fuck is you talking about? Oh! By six. You got to be gone by six. By six? Oh! Now what I say? I I got to say goodbye to my mama first. You ain't gone by six, your mama gonna say goodbye to you. Yeah? Come on. 
Come on, y'all. Come on. Time for y'all to go on home. Okay. All right, Stone. I thought we was in this together. We are, but it's time for y'all to go. All right. All right, all right. What you gonna do, Sako? Oh, I'm gonna hang around here till about six. All right. Hey, right? Yeah. You and me going over to the clinic after, right? Socrates heard that boy gasping and snorting in that dumpster. He heard him, but it wasn't worth the mark against his soul to see that crackhead bleed.
Morning, Mr. Fortler. Hey, Corina. I thought you might get hungry. Thank you, Corina. You're welcome. How's Winnie? She's real good. I wanted to thank you for helping. to thank you again. I was still home. He's in the house. But you know, he still ain't got a job and he's mad too. He told me not to come over here. But I told him I owed you at least a breakfast and a thank you. I was just a shame, honey, because you're like you can't be no man. But he'll come around, though. Besides, he knows. There's a whole lot of men out here that carry your load, woman. There's a whole lot of men. Corinna couldn't have known how much that touch meant to him. She knew things he'd never know. When she woke up in the morning, she thought about a better life. And with that touch, maybe Socrates could see something better, too. Hey! Hey, you, I want you! Yeah, you, man! Get him! You turned on me, nigga? No! You told him where to find the body. You told ah. the police. You give me up. Ah. You told him. No, I did it. Yeah, better not see your sorry ass no more, pussy boy. That's okay. He can run. I know where the little motherfucker live at. Socrates had some hard fights in his life, but the hardest was when he couldn't do anything. He never liked talking to doctors and bureaucrats because he said they never answered a question except to tell him lies. He wondered what lies they were telling him now. You ever fix any furniture before? Uh-oh. If I could get some glue down in there and uh, brace it, you know, like hold it all together with a belt like, I'd make these legs stronger than they was before. See, some of the stuff they can teach you in prison, pretty useful. They don't cut you down in the streets first. Socrates saw that Darrow was scared. Scared of doing what he had to do to be a man. Hey, 
It's your foster parents gonna be mad at you for not coming home. Mm-mm. I was gone for four days one time. They ain't even know. Well, come on, help me turn the table over. Ready? Yeah. Easy. Manhood is no easy thing in South Central. Down here, you don't have to join the army to go to war. Hey, you remember what we talked about? About oh, Philip and them? Hey. Set that down easy, Daryl. There you go. All right. Today's the day. You scared? Uh-uh. At them? Good punch you gave that boy, though. Landed right on the chin. Come on, don't be that way, Daryl. Stood up for yourself. That's all a black man can do. Hey, you're always outnumbered. You're always outgunned. They still gonna be after me. Yeah, but you done stood up. Did your best. But now, you ain't got nothing to be ashamed of for the rest of your life. That's gonna help me. Look, you done did your job, Daryl. Now it's up to me. I got to go out here and find me a job. Maybe I can help you. I'm afraid it's bad news. I got a fax this morning, and they are saying that they cannot consider you for the job because you do not have a phone and because you live outside the geographical perimeter of the store. What can I see that? I threw it away. Now, please leave or understand that I will go to the police if you don't stop harassing us. That's what you call asking for a job? I harassing? Don't what you call it. The police will arrest you if you come here again.
what you wrong. You ain't got no business here, Socrates. Fuck no. And the boy just want a visit. Uh, you ain't gonna trick yourself into my house behind some boy now. You're not welcome here. I'm his best friend, love you. Can't deny him that, not now. You got a gun on you? What? I don't want no weapons in my house now. I'm unarmed, officer. Forces in there now. Yes, ma'am. I'll be back in 20 minutes. Huh? Mr. Burke needs his sleep. Hey, Burke. Take it easy. Take it easy. Come on. How you feel? It's uh, like when they told me. Might be cancer all of a sudden. Had trouble standing up. And after a week of test, shit. You in pain? You hurting? <sighs> you got a gun I could borrow something. For what? You, you know. Doctor said I might got three, six months. And he, he said, uh, you can't give me no good painkiller till they try chemo or radiation. Now they're telling me that uh, since I ain't got the right kind of insurance, they can't even give me the treatment I need. You want to shoot yourself? I can't do that, right? Got money, so I go, I can pay for it. You know, I've been putting away part of my social security ever since Lovia took me here. You know I bring a gun in here that you love you or have the cops on me before you call. <sighs> then meet me out in the street. Okay, how you gonna get there? Look at you, man, you sick. Lovia say you ain't even eating for shit. Just this pain, man. That's why I can't walk. That's why I can't eat. It's the pain. Daryl? Yeah? Go downstairs and wait for me. All right. The ten minutes is up. You need to talk for a few more minutes. I'll be right down. Mr. Burke, you forget his yeah, vest. I need I to told speak you. with him for a few more minutes, Miss Price. Excuse us. Uh, How much money you got, right? Over seventeen hundred dollars. I done saved it over the last five years. It's in the bottom of the bottom drawer of the bureau. I was saving it for love of you. But you take it. You get me a piece. After I'm gone, you give the rest of it to her. Okay, Burke. I'm gonna take two hundred dollars. I'll get your gun if I have to. But I'm gonna try and help you first. Does that mean I need you to hold on just for a couple of days. All right? Don't give up just because you can't pay them doctors. Alright? Doctors ain't everything.
heard you was a man to come talk to. Who told you that, Reba? Woman behind the bar, she tell you to come up here? Because if you did, you better take your ass and get out of here where you can still walk. I'll leave when I get what I came from. Trying to fuck with me. You will feel it when I fuck with you, brother. I bust you open like a goddamn watermelon. But what you want, then, nigga? from the hospital? They say it's definitely cancer. Definitely. Don't you be running up no longer. This is called my fault now. I got the local number right here, Miss Brown. Any enterprises? Hi, my name's Socrates Fortlow. Hello, can I help you? Yeah, I want to speak with somebody about uh, my application for a job at your store over there on Beverly Glen. How do you spell the last name? Fortlow. F O R T L O W. Fortlow. Okay, there's no record of your application. But the woman there, Miss Grimes, she said that you faxed her a letter saying that you couldn't hire me because I don't have no phone and because I live too far from there. Those aren't our current requirements, Mr. Forlow, and there's no record of your application. Well, you sure? I mean, maybe, maybe you threw it away when you rejected it. Every application is put on the computer, so it'd be impossible to reject someone and not have them here. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Uh, thanks a lot. Fordlow, my name is Parker. This is Mr. Weems. We work for Kingman Security Services. Would you like to come upstairs? No. Just to talk, brother. Have a seat, Mr. Fordlow. Coffee? What you guys want? We want to know what kind of problem it is you have with Miss Grimes. The only problem I got is I need a job. She said you've been harassing her. That she told you she can't file your application without a phone number. That's a bullshit right there, see? They don't need no phone number. Even if they did, so what? I got the star because I can't afford no phone? I just need a job, man. Work so I can live. How do you expect to get a job if you're intimidating the people here? Well, what am I supposed to do? You can't work here. Grimes and Cryer scared you coming here with your guns blazing. What kind of game are you playing, Fort Lowe? What you mean, man? I mean, do you really want a job? Yes, I do. That's why I'm here. I got to work. Can't sit on my ass because somebody don't like my clothes or my skin. We work for a market about five blocks down. The manager is a man by the name of Gonzalez. You won't scare Bobby Gonzalez. Maybe we can talk to him about you. But there's just one question that I have. You got the 
job. At the supermarket? Mm-hmm. So what'd you say? About what? On your application. Where? When they asked you about your prison record. They had these two security guards down there. Uh, Parker and Weems. They're both ex-LAPD. Now, they knew I was an ex-con right off the bat. So what you say? I told them they didn't have to look into that. All I wanted was some work. And what if they check it out later? Well, I'll work till they fire me and get me another job. Or I won't. So what you want to eat? Yeah, that's just what I was going to ask you. Say what? You want to have dinner with me? I don't believe it. What? All this time you've been coming here, you've never asked me out to dinner. <clears throat> Look, I ain't never had no job before. I didn't have nothing to offer. Now, a man can't be with a woman if, if he can't pay the bills. Even I know that. Well, you want to go or don't you? Baby, put those in the box. Thank you, please. Hey, Corina. Hi. Uh, this is my friend Daryl. Daryl, it's Corina. Hello. Hi. And, uh, well, we, uh, we brought you something. Mr. Ford, look at something for us. Hey. Hey, Howard. Uh, I didn't know y'all was moving. Howard got a nighttime computer operator's job over at Silicon Studies in Venice. We got a place over there. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's real good, Howard. Hey, well, I guess uh, that'll make this y'all's going away present. Oh, Lord. I don't get it. What's this for? I found this table, Howard. It was all broken down and scarred up. I put it back together. I glued it, sanded it, sealed it to me. I did that. Yeah? Yeah. And now I'm giving it to you. Because every time you sit down to eat at it, I want you to say thank you. I want you to say thank you for everything you got, Howard. I don't know what to say. I just wish there was something we could do for you. Well, there is something that y'all could do for me. Come on, Darren, we ready to go. Give us a minute, Howard. Okay, but hurry up. You got everything? Well, I gotta go with them. You know it ain't safe around here no more for you. With Philip and them running around? Besides, over there in Venice, you got a chance for a new start, a new school, all of that. But I like it out here. I know you like it out here. I like you being here, but I can't get custody of you, Daryl. Now, Howard and Corina, they already got a family. And social services gonna pay them good money for you to stay with them. What, you scared of going to a new place? A little. Well, that's good. Well, they got gangs over there in Venice, you know. So you got to watch out. Don't get in with no gangs. Okay, I don't wanna do that no way. You ready? You want to see Mr. Burke? Yeah, right there. 
tell him I hope he's feeling better. All right. What's up? You're going to have to get in the back then, Darren. I got a space ready for you. Hey, Karina. Hi, Mr. Fulmo. All right. See you Saturday, Darren. Come over there and uh, show Howard there how to barbecue. In your dreams. <laughs> hey. Thanks a lot for looking out for Daryl, yo. Oh, he's a good boy. We already got him in his school. Well, I'm gonna send y'all that extra hundred dollars a month. He he don't eat that much. Don't worry, Sako. We're gonna take real good care of Till the pain stops. Three, four, every four hours. You ain't drinking, are you? Just a drop of wine or two. Maybe a shot of scotch before I go to sleep. No. Yeah. Don't take too much. Alcohol and morphine don't mix. You wanna go out tonight? Where? Dilly's bar. Dilly's? You ain't got no business in a place like that, sick as you are. I want to have a drink in a bar while I look at some long legs on a woman. Shit. This whiskey making me see double, psycho. And you know one of you plenty ugly as it is. You know why I like you, Sarko? No, man, no. Because you don't know no better. That's why. <laughs> Ray Laporte. The what? Mm. Ray Laporte. That's what we used to say in Paris. Open up, goddammit, because Uncle Sam is here. <laughs> There's something else, man. Gun in my hand. Sweet girl on my lap. You know, I could have died right then. I should have died. No, man, we'd have missed you. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'd have missed you. I went all through the war. Never met one like you. What exactly is one like me? A hero. You're the closest thing to a hero I ever met. You must be drunk. Sweet Charlie. Fifty dollars for all the scotch you bring. There's twenty more for to bring them on time. It's your thing. Is it your birthday? No, Charlie. It's a going away party. I'm going home with my family. Oh, where's home? Down south. Oh, that's nice. When you leaving? Later on tonight. What you talking about, Bert? Sacco, <clears throat> you're a hero, all right? Not many left like you. Yeah, not many that stupid. Ah, uh, you ain't no fool, Sacco, just walk home. Uh-uh. 
As a matter of fact, I ain't never said nothing that you didn't already know. That's because you were thinking, man. I ain't never had no knowledge that you ain't had. At least, not up to now. Yeah, what you know now? About death. I could tell you about death, cold and clear. You scared, Bert? Scared of pain. I'm scared of pain, all right, but not no death. Not now. Is it the dope? No, even before you got me my drug, I could feel it. Laid up in my room late at night with the uh, ice pack on my belly. If I laid still enough, I could feel it. What? You could feel what? Like icy silver snakes moving up and down my body. Sliding, singing. But I got real quiet. That feeling would take over... And I'd be over on the other side. While I'm dying, something else is coming to light. <sighs> I was scared to die. Now I'm ready to let go. I just had a couple of things that I needed to do first. Yeah, what you want? Have a drink. Flirt with a pretty girl. Have a talk with my best friend. Socrates. Say what? I want to know what you see when you look at me. I always wanted to know, but that's not the kind of question one man should ask another. But I can now. Well, what you say now? Tell me what you see when you look at me. I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say, Bert. My friend. You're my friend. Uh-huh. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna get us a taxi, Bert. You wait right here. Oh, no, let's wait for a bus, man. I like to watch the lights. I know what you see. Huh? I know what you see. I know you love me, man. I love you, too. Let me get my pills out of my pocket, will you? Okay. Pull me out of 10. No, 12, man. Take it away. You know you don't need to take no more of these now. You need to wait till in the morning. Come. Uh, leave me here, man. Get up on the bus and go. I'm not leaving you out here, man. Why not? You can't save me. Not this time. You my friend. Doctor said I'm dead, man. Dead. 
You know, tonight's the best I'm ever going to have it again. You did that for me. The job is done, Socrates. Now it's time to die. It's all right. Oh, no. <laughs> Hurry up, buddy. What's wrong with you, guy? Get on and get on. I couldn't see him, but I knew that he was there, looking after me, even in death. That bus was carrying him on to places most men couldn't even imagine. Because Socrates had been as low as a man could go. But he came back loving hard and deep and strong. A rich man would never have that kind of power. And precious few lovers could ever be that satisfied.